the opposition clearly oppose. Question number two, the Honourable Paula Bennett. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. My question is to the Prime Minister. Does she stand by all her government's policies? Yes, on behalf the of the Royal Prime Honourable Minister. Honourable Winston Peters, on behalf of the Prime Minister. Right. Um, why is her government being less ambitious than the previous national government with her target to reduce material hardship, particularly given her statement on Tuesday that material hardship as being one of the most consistent drivers of poor outcomes for children? Uh, in response, the government has not reduced its targets. It has it's increased its ambition ma ma uh, ma massively under the change of government. And how can you possibly talk of having a target when, on the 22nd of January this year, the New Zealand Herald was carrying a report which goes to the core of poverty, where the richest 1% of Kiwis got 28% of all wealth created last year, while the poorest 30%, the very people we're speaking about and addressing in our policies of the population, got just 1% of that wealth. Uh, supplementary, can she confirm that her government's targeted total reduction in the number of children in material hardship over the next 10 years is 70,000, like announced um, yesterday, and over the last five years of the national government, the number of children in material hardship fell by 85,000? The oh. member can choose which of the questions he answers. Well, let's address the second question, because it's one that the minister. Pardon? Well, you're talking about the state of the nation, I'm talking about the state of her leadership. <laughs> <laughs> all right. And you'd know all about that. <laughs> First of all, the governments, the, the previous governments' so-called measurements have been also called into question by improper treasury measurements, and we're waiting around to find out what they really meant by that, as they relate to our improper advice from them as well which they are currently working on. And when we know that, we'll be able to speak with exactitude about what our targets and numbers will be. Um, supplementary, Mr Speaker, uh, the numbers of uh, 70,000 that the, uh, the government has announced that they want to reduce material hardship over the next 10 years um, by 70,000, National's record over the last five years order, of reducing order, by... Order, order, we, order. We'll go right back to the beginning and, and one of... In fact, two of my very good predecessors indicated that questions start with a question word. And so that would be a good way to start. The member hasn't got close yet. Yeah. Sorry, sir, I'm just trying to clarify because the minister is no, mistaken well. a question. So I'm just trying to get a clarification here. So in light of uh, the minister's uh, answer, um, can he please explain how the reduction over the last five years of the national government made of the number of children material hardship falling by 85,000 was not a prediction by Treasury, but actually in MSD's household income survey, which has been used, so we've seen a reduction of 85,000 in the order, last order, five order. years. Order. That's enough. Well, I do not believe for a moment what the minister of uh, that member is saying. Uh, and, well, I don't because there's great doubt as to the veracity of what she's saying already. No, no, but no, more no, importantly... Order, order, order. Member will resume his seat. Well, I was listening and... I did hear uh, the member say that he doubted the member's veracity, and that is something which has been. Well, I I think I think if he doubted the member's veracity in the house, it might even be worse. Um, so I will ask the deputy or the deputy prime minister to withdraw that comment. I will withdraw and apologise and say this. I think there is an enormous, not a grain of salt, but a bag of salt. That's got to be laid around the comments by that uh, member. And more particularly, I do not think this is the right place to litigate the National Party leadership challenges at this point in time. Keep deflecting, old man. Um, point of order. 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 No, no, I'm going to deal with it first. What I would like is silence in the House while I indicate that that was very unacceptable. The member knows it, and as a result of it, 
four questions will be deducted from the National Party. Point of order, Mr Speaker. A point of order, the Hon. Paula Bennett. Oh, a point of order, Mr Speaker. I seek leave to actually table the household income survey, which, yes, is publicly available, but I feel that since actually my character is being called into a question in this House for my lack of honesty, and that is actually why well, I made well, that the, the member will resume his seat. I, I took action to require the withdrawal of the reflection on the member's character. I, de I dealt with it, and the member should have left it at that. Point, point of order, point of order, point of order. A point of order, the Honourable Simon Bridges. The, the issue is, Mr Speaker, directly after uh, the Deputy Prime Minister with, withdrew the remark, he launched into a political attack on the member around uh, party politics, and that's what led to this. And so. Uh, I can understand you know, what then followed wasn't acceptable, but four SUPs, uh, it seems to me, uh, given the behaviour of the Deputy Prime Minister, is uh, a very harsh call. Yes. It, it might well be, but it's been made. Uh, further supplementary, Paula Bennett. Yeah, so, um, well, actually, I sought leave, um, Mr Speaker, to table the household yeah, yes, income and, survey. And I'm but... declining to put that leave. OK. So, uh, is she committed to reducing the number of children in low-income households by 100,000 uh, in three years, like the national government committed to, or 100,000 over 10 years, like she announced last night? Yeah, well, first of all, this government came to power very aware of the problem, and it didn't take nine years to get around to thinking about it, and more particularly, we are setting out to put together a political consensus to reduce poverty in this country as fast as we possibly can. We know it's not going to be easy and long-term targets are good, but the difference is that in the terms of family incomes and poor incomes in particular and the quality of homes in which they, I am answering the homes, I know that the facts are remote from that moment. That's why she's at the back bench now. But my point is we are addressing the incomes and the accommodation levels. And when we put those together, you will see sound Treasury measurements that show we're making great progress. And as for Aunt Tolly, if I was here, I'd just keep quiet because she's on her way out. Supplementary. Thank you. Will her government commit to continuing to spend $130 million on whānau water to help reduce child poverty, particularly in Māori and Pacifica whānau? <laughs> Can I just say that the best, uh, if there are some sound policies from the previous administration, we will take those with us. Uh, we're prepared to look up with open minds, as we always have, uh, being the image of liberality when it comes to sound thinking uh, and collegiality. Uh, and if there are sound policies in Whānau, we'll take them forward. But, you know, you cannot possibly mean to be sincere, of, how shall I say it, generically on that issue, when Maori housing ownership declined by 38 per cent under their administration. A supplementary to the Prime Minister. Um, is she planning to do another families' incomes package over the next three years, which could lift another 50,000 children out of child poverty, as National plan to do, or has she spent all the money on fees-free tertiary education, which hasn't seen any increase in tertiary enrolments? Could I just say that the government's working on its current package? And we're not going to be forecasting the next package until we've got this one well underway. That is a possibility, but not at this point in time. However, the turnaround in the economy is such that we could be quite confident of possibly doing what the member says, and given that uh, Mr Rutherford in today's Herald says that our opponents are concerned that the economy is going so well that they need a turnaround to help themselves in the future. A point of order, the Honourable Senator. Oh, I do just want to confirm, I may have missed it, but those were on behalf of the Prime Minister by the Deputy Prime Minister, or is it the case that the uh, Deputy Prime Minister has already assumed the role in his head of Prime Minister? Point of order, please. Um, point of order, please. Well, can, Speaking of point I, of order. No, well, well, I really don't think that I need well, to mention. Well, can I just correct it then? I mean, it's important for the public out there that we. Well, I, 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 right. think, I think I. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, th I, think I, I think I can rule on it. And I, and I just want to do a bit of a warning to the National Party Leader of the House that we've had one example of 
quite disorderly behaviour <laughs> resulting in a lack of questions, and frivolous points of order could well be treated the same way. That was a frivolous point of order. A point of order. A point of order, Simon, the Honourable Simon Bridges. Oh, look, I appreciate the, the point the speaker's making, but I genuinely do want to understand that they are on behalf of the Prime Minister. I, I haven't I, heard I, that. I, I, I will make clear to the House uh, at any time that the uh, Minister, the Deputy Prime Minister, becomes the Acting Prime Minister. That will be, that will be made clear uh, to the House. Now, that, as the member aware, is aware, um, could happen for a substantial period of time later in the year, uh, but also uh, when the Prime Minister is, is overseas uh, on official business. Uh, and um, I, I, I really think that the member um, is, is not very serious in the comments that he makes, and it's a bit dangerous. And I, I think, I think what, he, what, he, what he's going to see is that when he does that, he causes other problems. The right uh, honourable Winston Peters. Mr Speaker, I made it very clear in, in the answer to my primary question that I was speaking on behalf of the Prime Minister. You see over here we're trying to make a Prime Minister successful, not trying to depose them. <laughs> well, I, I think given, given, given the fact that we had um, two frivolous from my left and one from my right, we'll just call it all square and we'll go on to question number four. Mr Speaker. A point of order, the Honourable yep. Porter Bennett. So I completely accept uh, that my comments were out of order and your ruling, sir, of course, um, as you expect in this House. But um, as I put something in front of my question and was punished, it seems that it's quite acceptable for extra bits to be put on unnecessarily that are inciting um, the politicising of the answers and the questions that they're getting in this House today, and that's acceptable at some level quite by you. Yeah. And, and I think... I think the member is aware that I think the member is aware. Yes, yes. I people are, are evening it up pretty quickly. Um, I think the member is absolutely aware that the question she asked, even after the totally unacceptable uh, uh, piece at the beginning, was dealt with, was still highly political. And, and, and the rulings that a number of my predecessors have made is that when people ask those questions in a political way, um, they should expect a p political answer. Uh, straight questions, short questions, um, I will be more interested in protecting members. We now go on to the Honourable Stephen Joyce. Do you want to have a go? Get the four subs back. <laughs> The Honourable Stephen Joyce. <laughs> uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. 